I mean, they're really gorgeous, and I think it's one of the best things that is going to come out of this whole situation is that we are now going to have a home that feels a lot more like the experience, um, and certainly uh, the experiences in other cities as well. Um, New Fest is not the big community event that it, that it is in some of our other cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles, where uh, Outfest is considered, and I lived there for a long time, I would say the cultural event for gay lesbian people, and you just go. <laughs> you know, those are your days, you go, and um, now they have shows for mommies and daddies with their kids, so that's nice, we're gonna try to do that this year too. Um, but it's a very um, delicate balance, and we, um, you know, it's, it's sponsorship is still a big, uh, a big component of, of where most festivals get their money. If I'm not mistaken, I don't want to speak for other festivals, but the way that the finances usually work is that the biggest amount of money comes from sponsors, right? Major donors, uh, foundations and grants. Major donors, members, I would say then sponsorship and businesses. Ticket sales. Ticket sales. But does ticket sales, where do ticket sales fall within your overall budget? Because um, most none of us can exist only on ticket sales. Right? They're they're crucial. They they don't come anywhere near covering the cost of putting on the film festival, but they're they're absolutely crucial to the budget. Thanks for us. And um, Paul, I just wanted to grab you for a second and um, talk a little bit about. I want to we'll talk a little bit about gay and lesbian content at gay and lesbian film festivals. But Slam has always included gay and lesbian content. Um, but how do you see this sort of cycle among, I guess, just straight film festivals? How much content is there from gay and lesbian film festivals, uh, excuse me, gay and lesbian filmmakers and films? And do you think it's sort of the best of what's out there that gets picked for Sundance or Slam Dance in these places? Um, well, um, Slam Dance, kind of, this is our 15th year, so we're celebrating our 15th anniversary, and we kind of grew up with the the emergence of this kind of new wave of gay cinema in America in 1994, 95. Um, I remember, uh, you know, at Sundance you had films like Go Fish and you know, kind of religions of um, Criminals in Love and Strand releasing, started to release in mainstream theaters, and and those are the years that Slam Dance kind of came into what we became. Um, Slam Dance has always been, we've never really been genre based, we've never programmed any particular type of genre film, but our you know, our main focus was first-time filmmakers with very low budgets, you know. Um, you know, we would say budgeted under a million, but that really meant budgeted like under a hundred thousand. And a lot of the new gay cinema in those years were being done at those budgets. Um, so our programming was really, you know, you know, great films by new young filmmakers. And there happened to be a lot of um, gay and lesbian films that fit that category then. And, um, you know, we just kind of grew up with that, and it's always been part of the festival. Um, our grand prize winner in 1998 was um, Surrender Dorothy, that went on to go to, go to like all the emerging uh, gay lesbian film festivals around the world. Um, so it, it's always been part of our festival, whether it's the best of, of the bunch, well, we see it as the, you know, in terms of our programming and the films we were getting, we saw it as um, the best of the genre from first-time filmmakers um, at that time. Um, I think Sundance has been, you know, very important and, and pivotal to, uh, you know, the, the mainstreaming of gay and lesbian film festivals, and, uh, films in, in America, and, and film festivals uh, that have sprung out from, um, uh, you know, from activity at Sundance. So, um, I don't, you know, probably some of the best, the best, I don't know, that's so, so subjective, you know. But, you know, uh, just to step back one point where you were talking about before, for Slam Dance, it's also, it's very expensive to put on a film festival in Park City. Mm -hmm. Very, I mean, we're based in Los Angeles, we've been doing this for 15 years, and uh, we've had to grow what ways outside Park City as a year-round organization. Uh, the screenplay competition has become very successful for us in the off-season that helps us finance this. Um, we've tried everything. We have a, a year-round online film festival that we established actually in 1998 called Anarchy. Um, I and mean, we've done it all. We've taken films on tour around the country. We try everything, but you're constantly having to find new ways to, to raise money. Um, all of our, we're completely sponsor-funded. 
um, pretty much, and it's always been like a whole bunch of small sponsors. We've never had that huge, you know, Mercedes-Benz sponsor <laughs> to help us. So, um, you know, we have a very small staff. We have a year-round staff that goes part-time half of the year, maybe four people in the, in the office, and everything else is volunteer. So it's really a, a, a passion organization. You know, people are involved with this because, um, you know, they love Slam Dance, what it stands for, new filmmakers, and being part of something, um, you know, discovering new talent, all that stuff. And that's how we survive. And, um, you know, being lesbian filmmaking has been a big part of that Slam Dance over the years. Thank you. Um, Orly, I'm wondering if you could start us off on maybe thinking about how distribution factors into all of this, because um, I've often maintained that gay and lesbian filmmakers have a slight advantage in some way. Um, I've always felt, anyway, as a filmmaker, that I know that if I make a film that's that's pretty good, it's good, hopefully good, much better than good, um, but if I make a good get film that has gay and lesbian content, I will get it to at all these festivals, and that is and tends to be, for many of us, a de facto sort of limited release uh, that leads to a network broadcast sometimes or a DVD or something, but um, how do you see distribution sort of factoring into all of this and the need or the, for a home maybe for for these films and their life after that? Well, first of all, I will say I do think that still, I mean, even though there's been a you know a little bit of a glut of gay in cinema, in other words, it's such a proliferation, still it remains one of the only genres of cinema other than horror where you really can guarantee uh, that you you know if your film is pretty good you're going to get you know worldwide festival exhibition and like the distribution in some in one of the formats you mentioned all of the above um, and it's interesting because I was just at Durham Palm Springs and international and I watched you know 13 films all of which were pretty good some of which I like better than others and I know that probably none of them will get distribution and that's remarkable and you know there's companies like I have seen now that are picking up a lot of small indies. And their whole mission is really just to, to sort of follow the model of what has been going on with gay cinema all along, which is show at film festivals, get you know buzz, get press, and then go right to you know broadcast and VOD. Um, I think that, that it's I mean I, there's a few things I want to say about the gay film festival liability. I think gay film festivals are more important now than ever, particularly because of the extreme cost of marketing films theatrically, the extreme glut in theatrical exhibition, which has then you know, rendered so many films undistributable, um, that this is the only opportunity for audiences to see films, for filmmakers to start to get some, to get a career going, agents coming to film festivals. And it's not just, you know, I mean, I, I can speak for this more because I live in Los Angeles at the moment. Um, I, you know, I was, I was talking with a Mexican consul general who said to me, she's straight, and she's like, I go to Alcas for art, I want to see art film. And, you know, there's plenty of film festivals in Los Angeles, so for her to say that about Alcas is remarkable. So I, I think that, um, you know, I, 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 and I, I mean, I also, you know, we talked about this earlier, I, and I'm, it's not for right this moment, this conversation, but I do also think that there's a place for gay film festivals to do their own level of aggregating content, uh, and I don't want to use it in such like um, non-cinematic terms, but aggregating films, what, because the audiences are there, the audiences are coming from the community experience, um, they are, they are there, they know the Outfest brand, the New Press brand, the Frameline brand, they're loyal, and they're into it. And I think those audiences would be also into seeing, the same way they're, they're just going to Outfest Wednesdays to see what's going on all year long, they'd be into seeing whatever the festivals want to showcase in, in a digital platform down the road. And I think that that's something that should be addressed. Does Frameline we do that at all? And how does the distribution arm that Frameline work? Um, <clears throat> well, we distribute mostly to the educational market and also to other film festivals, but we also do broadcast sales. Yeah. And we do have... Um, um, <clears throat> I'll speak for distribution, but I'm not yeah, in the <laughs> distribution part. But um, we do um, have screen films for um, you know internet companies who are streaming, but um, it's mostly in Asia. And I don't think we have you know depends. Yeah, but there needs to be more. There would be great if there was one that was just gay. It's like I want to see gay films. Well, all the digital all platforms. I mean, when I was uh, when I was a staffer at Wolf, I did a digital distribution deal with twenty platforms. They all want the content because they knew the audiences are there. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I think, yeah, we can, I think we can, we can, we can, we can.